Man, oh man, guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to be digging into Baywatch Nights after all these years. What wonders there are to behold. Which makes this next story kind of disappointing for all of us, because the second episode is boring as hell. Clearly there was some behind-the-scenes rearranging as far as the episode order, but that's not uncommon as sometimes TV series are switched around to show some of their stronger episodes first to reel people in. But if that was the idea here, they failed miserably. This might be my least favorite Baywatch Nights episode, but you never know, I got a bad memory, so stay tuned for that cliffhanger. But come on, look at that title, Bad Blades. Doesn't that just make you want to snooze? Lordy. The tediousness of this episode is some feat too, considering the plot is about a rollerblade-based heist. So here's the deal. This is Kemp, played by John O'Hurley, who was in a couple Baywatch episodes previously. I neglected to mention he was on Seinfeld, so if nothing else, this episode exists so I can correct that grave error. He is a big bad thief with a foolproof plan. He's not gonna go himself. Instead, he's gonna train a bunch of punks with nothing to lose how to pull off the greatest rollerblade-themed heist ever conceived. I'm not kidding, there's like a rigorous training program here, which I'm sure they thought was the coolest thing since the Rachel haircut. Just so we're clear, these are all top skaters with bad pasts who this guy thought to bring together for this heist. So that's insane. That was sloppy. Very, very sloppy. This plot is sloppy. Very, very sloppy. Great, so as long as there's a lot of convenient ramps nearby, this plan will go off without a hitch, got it. Cut to our three heroes, who are in the fanciest set they could afford. Look, there's a bunch of statues or something. And are waiting impatiently to meet with our latest client. I have better things to do than stand around. Name, Name one. Have a Ha ha, whoever that is. Anywho, they've been hired by Frances Sandrine, who is concerned about her son Todd, one of the previously mentioned rollerblade thieves. She wants them to look into his activities, being too rich and busy to do so herself. I want you to find out what Todd is into now and uh, what's wrong with him, what he needs to get his life back on track. Ah, so the standard very special episode private detective mentors package makes sense. Armed with multiple copies of the actor's headshot, they promise they'll do their best. It also helps that they've been hired by someone who's loaded this time, which makes me wonder why she didn't just shell out the cash for a better agency. There's an expression, throwing money at a problem. I understand it. I'll just probably never be able to afford it. But make no mistake, if I suddenly won the lottery, all of my Hobie problems would instantly go away. So they establish that Todd has a dark past, which includes a whole host of things, not the least of which is drunk driving and armed robbery. Mitch and Garner have two different but equally understated opinions on this. That kid is a knucklehead. Eh, he's finding himself. Maybe he just needs a little time. Eh, armed robbery. He's just finding himself. All kids do that. Dad, we're out of cornflakes. What? You son of a bitch. You no good kid. Sometime later, Mitch and Garner tail Todd and his buddies to a warehouse. Think we can make it? Uh, I can. I mean, I can't. Haha, <laughs> fatty. Hey, there's some burgers in this dumpster over here. You thinking what I'm thinking, Garner? We're gonna be seeing a lot of boring slow motion rollerblading this episode. Yeah, that's definitely what I was thinking about. What am I doing in this episode? Nothing? Cool, good meeting, guys. I'd just like to point out that Ryan was a PI before it became trendy and they were handing out licenses to every egotistical lifeguard and beach cop that asked, but whatever, I guess she's there for moral support. You might notice some overcompensation in the music department in this episode. Pretty exciting, huh, folks? Mitch meets with Pebbles Runkin, my favorite breakfast cereal, and also a bookie who identifies the thieves as championship skaters who were all disqualified for various criminally related reasons. 
So he's a 64-year-old bookie who's really knowledgeable about extreme rollerblading? Is that something Pebbles Runkin is really into? Disqualified from the Nationals last year. Why? Tested positive for steroids. For openers. Then he beat the hell out of the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. Pebbles. Pebbles also let slip that there's a bet on the street that Mitch's detective agency will fold. Do yourself a favor, pal. Don't book it. Two years later, Pebbles became a very rich man. Now what the hell is Garner doing, playing with his guitar? Who's doing any work around here? Luckily for them, Mitch comes up with a plan for that useless Ryan, something that utilizes her specialized skill as a PI. Bump into Todd at the pool and hope he finds her hot enough to open up about his problems. Sure enough, he's about to spill the beans when his nasty cohorts drag him off. <laughs> <laughs> the young and the restless. <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> In an amazing stroke of competence, Ryan actually comes up with something on Kemp. Snowmobiles, jet skis, one-of-a-kind crimes. Wait, so this guy is, like, constantly coming up with schemes like this? Did he just get bored with normal crimes? I've got it! Dogs with katanas! It's just crazy enough to work! And apparently, he's number two on Interpol's Most Wanted? That's not the only thing that's number two around here. Hey, question. If these folks are all formerly some of the best professional bladers with criminal pasts, and they're all in the same area around the same time a complicated rollerblade heist occurs, they're not going to be immediately caught because... Okay, stop! You're gonna have to tell me everything about this man. Hey, look at these two scenes back to back and tell me what the problem is here. You know what the problem with Todd is? You. The kid has no idea how to go through life without a mother bailing him out of problems. His mother's been buying him out of trouble all his life. I think she's a good mom. Who am I and what do I feel about things? Who knows? Go for it. Psych! You know that's not in the budget, idiot. Sure look cool in the script, though. Get this, they actually figure out their plan because Kemp didn't erase the blackboard very well. Like, seriously? Number two on Interpol's Most Wanted? They're off to the Treasury Department and the heist is on. Wait, if they were just gonna gas the guards, like, what's the point of the rollerblades? Just wear some masks and run really fast? Okay, now come on, again, the rollerblade seems sorta of superfluous now. Whoa, good thing I installed that ramp on my car. Was blading through busy traffic also part of this ingenious plan? They head into a tunnel and Mitch and Garner commandeer a motorcycle to follow them. Oh yeah! Well, why didn't these dummies just pull off a motorcycle heist? Speed, man, speed! Mitch's plan here appears to be knocking them lightly over. Uh, I guess I'm defeated! This feels like it goes on just short of forever. Just skating in a straight line while Mitch pushes them over. You wouldn't hurt a lifeguard, would you? Ah! Thank God there's random trash all over the place for me to fall on. Looks like I learned my lesson. Rollerblade heists are bad news. And money solves all of your problems. Mitch, that was his whole deal, throwing money at his problems. Money won't solve all your problems. Next time on Baywatch, Hobie gets trapped in a fire with a bunch of blind kids. Meanwhile, Logan is jealous of Cody over something. Seeing is believing.